I want to introduce our last presenters. Um, Spiros Hatteras has served as president and CEO of Holyoke Medical Center since 2013. In his role there, Spiros has led efforts to continually improve the quality of services provided to people who experience mental distress or substance abuse problems, including oversight of an $8 million initiative to create an exemplary and transformative behavioral health emergency care service. Sean Donovan, who will be presenting with Spiros, is part of the Western Mass Recovery Learning Community and spends most of his days between the RLC community centers, mutual support groups, and meeting new people in Quaker meeting houses, emergency shelters, and cafes across Western Mass. That sounds good. <laughs> his work as community bridger takes him to these places. He facilitates and often trains new facilitators across New England and the country for alternative to suicide groups. Sean helped to plan and present during a community conversation at Holyoke Medical Center that resulted in an ongoing collaboration among hospital leaders and people who use the hospital's behavioral health services, which is what Spiros and Sean will tell us more about now. Thank you. secondary and I'm going to just make you know, some comments about how, what, what he felt for me so I hope I'm not uh, throwing you off but go ahead and tell us about the, the work that you guys are doing. Thank you. I guess I'll use this. Um, thank you Spiros. Um, yeah I guess I'd like to talk a little bit about the community conversation that um, that Susan had, had brought up so thank you Susan and also Jennifer Earth for helping organize um, that conversation at Holyoke Medical Center along with Spiros and other people. Um, so, we actually were able to have a conversation uh, among members of the Western Mass Recovery Learning Community, people who actually are part of the community and work to support other folks. Um, and with probably a room full of 70 people, I want to say, uh, between security guards, hospital staff, and the emergency department, um, and other behavioral health workers at Holyoke Medical Center. And um, this took place in October, so I guess several months ago now. And it's also a part of a series, like Susan mentioned, of other conversations. So what happened there, though, was that the Department of Mental Health let four of us from the RLC have, have the stage, essentially, to have a panel. Um, there are, um, there's at least one other person here, Danny Scott, who was part of that panel, as well as Marty Hadge, who spoke at this very podium two years ago, and um, our friend Sarah Mauser as well. And what we did was we spoke about our experiences of um, you know, working through our own extreme states, uh, working through our own suicidal feelings, working through a lot of distress and trauma in the world, and sometimes it was working through the trauma we received while in the in the emergency department, not just at Holyoke Medical Center, but at many emergency rooms across our experiences. And what we did, though, is we talked from our own experiences as, hum as human beings. It wasn't necessarily us as peer workers or necessarily us as people on a panel, it was just people being human. And I think what that led to was a lot of um, deep conversation from people who are traditionally talking from the perspective of clinicians and security guards and therapists, talking about their experiences as human beings. And we were able to have a really powerful dialogue about um, all the struggles that we, we have in those spaces of crisis. Um, so the security guards in particular, I think, were pretty striking to me as people who shared that sometimes when they let go of their professional training to have the upper hand and to be above someone who's in a state of emotional unrest, when they got down on the level of that person, it's usually when they were able to de-escalate and connect to people, which goes against the training they received. So we had a lot of cool conversations that allowed to, like, to have people come from their human experiences. And I don't really think that would have happened if DMH hadn't really given over some of the spotlight to people that are in peer-to-peer -peer roles, because it's what we do every day. Um, we connect with people in psych hospitals. Um, I actually 
you know, canceled something that I usually do today, much like representatives and senators. Um, I'm usually at a psych hospital in Holyoke, trying to hold some space to have people talk about their experiences. So I'm sacrificing that to be here. So thank you all for being here too. <laughs> I appreciate that. And I just want to say, um, I think it's significant that the recent conversation that happened in Amherst was a collaboration with the League of Women Voters. And I think it's significant that today um, we're calling this the DMH Citizen Legislative Breakfast because what happens you know, when we have the ability to talk openly about stuff is not only people heal, but people become more active citizens. And a large part of my journey to you know, being in that capacity uh, has been through the Western Mass Recovery Learning Community, which a lot of you are familiar with. Um, so I just want to give one more, um, I guess like one more comment to say that like a lot of us that came to speak at the conversation in Amherst that will be here at STIC in a couple weeks, um, that came in the conversation in October, um, we're only there by the grace of our budget and by volunteerism. So we're actually facing a budget cut that's pretty severe. <laughs> as a lot of you might know about. Um, I think a lot of you in the behavioral health uh, professions like also you know, experience that. We used to have a um, upholstery shop in Holyoke. We used to have like, a shop where people could you know, work with plants, and that was a really healing place for folks, which has been defunded, as a lot of you know, <coughs> um, through CHD and other places, um, which is sad, because a lot of us found the value in that. And so I just want to ask that those of you who are in the legislature, um, both Senator and Representative, I really appreciate you for you know coming together for this event uh, to maybe like look at the Ways and Means Committee and just consider if if we really need to be cutting the Recovery Learning Community's budget by 50 percent because frankly you might not see us here next next year we might not have the budget to share this wisdom with you so I just want to end with that and to thank you all for being here so thank you. Sean. Uh, I just want to share my uh, experience uh, with the uh, uh, folks that came and, uh, and had the community conversation in Holyoke and just give you a couple minutes of my perspective on it. Um, I've been in healthcare for 26 years or so and I think that uh, it was one of the most profound experiences I had because it was really odd. You're sitting just like you, you know, we're sitting around tables and suddenly the tables completely turn and you find yourself looking at, at your emergency room from somebody else's eyes and somebody else's experience and you're like, wow, you know, so, so this is what it feels like. And, and so it created a lot of thought and conversation amongst the uh, members of our team. We were fortunate at the same time to have been received, no, to have received notice that we, uh, we were awarded a, uh, a grant from, uh, from the chart uh, through the HPC. And so, um, you know, these conversations are really creating the foundation for us to start thinking about what we're going to do and, and how we're going to impact you know, the services that we provide. Let me just say, if you haven't been to one of those community conversations and, and, uh, and, and one is near, near you, uh, I would highly recommend it. Uh, I happen to be you know, in the first one because you know, I'm the CEO of the hospital, but just fa fast forward a few months later, um, I come home to, uh, uh, to, 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 to Amherst where I live. And my, and my wife uh, is, is about to get out the door and she's telling me, you know, I got to run, I have a, a place to go. Uh, she, she volunteers for Mother Woman and she goes, I have to go to, the, to, to, to this event for Mother Woman and it's, uh, you know, community conversations. And I said, really, there's one right here? And she says, yeah, it's right here. And, and so, so I, I, I went and I went because each one is a little different. Each one, you know, brings different, you know, uh, elements into it. And I, and I have to say, I enjoyed it immensely, and I continue to go wherever I can to, 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 to hear what folks have to say. Um, let me tell you just one more minute about what we're going to do with, with charts. So, so, so the challenge that we all have, and I see a lot of our legislators here, is, is that there isn't enough funding. And while we continue to fight for parity and, 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 and we we'll continue to fund for mental health funding, I think one of, the, one of the elements of the solution has to be reallocating resources. So we as a hospital are a hub, you know, we, we sort of like get, 
you know, get everyone to, to come to our emergency room, to our inpatient units. And if we can take a healthcare dollar that we spend on a rehospitalization, on a length of stay that's, that's 10 days too long, uh, on a revisit of the emergency room, and take that dollar and, and, and provide, you know, community services like um, the, the, the RLC, like peer support groups and other, and respite, you know, how much further will that dollar go? Um, and I think that what we, you know, as we've been working with the chart folks in the last few months, we're starting to sort of really gel of what we're going to do. And what we really want to do is to stand here two years from now and tell you, here's what we did. We took, we took that money, we created a safe space in the emergency room where people come and can de-escalate, and then we, we partnered with community um, partners such as the RLC and, and Respite and created a different model of care that took the dollar that we used to spend on, on a rehospitalization and a revisit of the ED and redistributed it differently and made it go a lot farther uh, than, than it's going today. And that's what we're hoping to do um, and, and be standing here with some real outcomes. So thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you and appreciate it. Thank you. to um, David, Sean, Spiros, and Lisa, and to Senator Hummison and Representative Tosado. We are a fabulous community. Let's just keep moving. Um, this has been an inspiring event. I thank you all for your work. Um, it makes a difference. And um, we should all end now knowing that there is uh, great work that we can stand on the shoulders of and keep going. Thank you.